Have you ever wondered why happiness seems to be elusive? Do you feel like no matter what you do, you can't shake off the feeling of dissatisfaction in certain areas in your life? Do you ever question if your past decisions are holding you back from true happiness? Trust me, this has happened to me and I get it. Today, we're going to explore how your past impacts your present and how you can change your future to one of fulfillment and happiness. Hello, sophisticates. Welcome back to Brains and Bobbles with Davina Dandridge. Today, we're diving deep into a topic that's crucial for your well-being, and that's happiness. But not just any happiness, the kind of joy that comes from understanding yourself and making peace with your past. Are you ready to unlock your true potential for happiness? And if so, let's get started. First, let's talk about examining your past. What part of your past has impacted your emotions the most? Just think about it. Think about the choices that you've made over your life. Were they really in your control or were they influenced by someone else? Have you forgiven the people that are involved with that circumstance? Forgiveness is such a powerful tool. It's a tool for healing and a tool to help you move forward. Many women hold on to the pain of the past and the people that hurt them because they're seeking an explanation or closure. You know, you might not ever get that closure that you're looking for. The truth is that forgiveness is for you and not for the person that hurt you. You can forgive them without even having a conversation with them. And when you forgive the people that have hurt you, you release your emotions and then you are capable of moving forward. What happened to you in the past then takes on a new position in your emotional database. It doesn't have to remain that same painful incident that you experienced. You can control it and you can turn around how you feel about it. So forgiving is not forgetting. It's releasing. As Maya Angelou said, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. This quote, it beautifully captures the essence of emotional intelligence and sophisticated empowerment. See, emotional intelligence helps you to understand and manage your emotions, while sophisticated empowerment means keeping your dignity, keeping your strength, and your self-worth intact, no matter what it is that you're facing. Next, you should identify your triggers. What circumstances cause you to make the choices that you now regret? I mean, we've all made mistakes. We've all listened to the wrong people or had a different mindset that contributed to the events of the past that have in, impacted how we live or think today. Maybe you had no control over the situation and what happened in your life, but that experience, it still triggers your emotions. So you have to address it. Because for so long, you've been saying to yourself, if only I hadn't gotten with that person and wasted all that precious time, or if only I had gone to school, I could be making more money right now. And only I had said something, my life could be totally different. If I had moved to a different place, or if I had more information, or if I had done this, or if I had done that, my life would be different. You know, these thoughts of regret, or these thoughts of wishful thinking, they can still trigger you. But what that means is that that situation of the past, it still affects your emotions. You haven't gotten over it. It still impacts your thinking and that causes you to behave in a certain way. And that behavior that you're doing, it created the environment that you live in right now. So understanding your triggers helps you to manage your reactions and it helps you to make better choices and better decisions in your life. Being triggered, it not only impacts your emotions, but being triggered impacts your future happiness. So identifying your triggers allows you to manage them. You control them. And if you're not in control 
of the circumstances that happened in your past, if you didn't have anything to do with that, you can take control now by addressing and reassigning those triggers to allow you to thrive in your future. And you say, how can I reassign those triggers? Well, it takes work. Proverbs 4, 23 reminds us, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. By guarding our hearts, we ensure that our actions and decisions are guided by wisdom and they're guided with positivity, emotional intelligence and sophisticated empowerment. They are the keys to that process. Listen, I have a video that I want you to check out. It's called Take the Limits Off, Learn Why You Are Worthy of the Life That You Desire. Because a lot of time these triggers, they hold us back and keep us stuck and they diminish our self-confidence and dare I say, our self-worth. You can gain all of that back. Forgiveness plays a crucial role in realizing that you have potential for happiness. Have you forgiven yourself though for those past mistakes? Holding on to guilt and regret is only gonna weigh you down. In my book, Brains and Bobbles, Do What Works For You, I emphasize the importance of self-forgiveness. Everybody is talking about forgiving someone else, but forgive yourself. In that book, there are instructions for steps towards emotional freedom and happiness by self-forgiveness. So when you let go of past hurts, you make room for growth and joy. And joy is continued happiness, okay? You know, life can be difficult. When things happen to us, especially those things that are hurtful and the things that are triggering, we can carry shame and embarrassment about those things. And we carry that for way, way longer than we should. And I'm not saying you will never get embarrassed or you'll never be ashamed of anything. But what I'm telling you is that there is something that you can do about it so that you can release that. And when you're feeling shame and embarrassment, you feel like everybody knows that thing that you're going through and that they're judging you and they're talking about what happened to you every time that they see you. Listen, people are going through things in their own life, but you have to get those that type of thinking out of your head. I, I, you know, I know people, they say that she should have been smarter. You know, you can't let that ring in your head that people are saying that, or they're saying, I wouldn't have done that, or she's the one sh -sh -sh -sh, that X, Y, Z happened to. We can't walk around with that shame. It's debilitating, you know, and if you're feeling that way, you haven't forgiven yourself yet. All eyes are not on you. Forgiving yourself gives you the freedom and the happiness regardless of the events of the past or your participation in them. So release the pressure to be perfect or release the idea that you had to come from a certain place. You are and you have the ability to be different from that person of the past that made those mistakes that you feel today. And it's no secret, you're gonna make some more mistakes. Mistakes are a part of life. So we have to embrace that. The mistakes are part of the learning and a part of the journey to the happiness that you desire. And one way of thinking that I used to have is that um, I had to forgive myself for thinking that in the past, I didn't do enough in preparation for my future. It's an illustration of how thinking can change how you view yourself and your self-worth. I regretted not leaving home right out of high school. I didn't move out of the house until I got married the first time. So to me, that felt like I was 10 steps behind everybody else because I watched my friends who did go away to school or moved away later on for a job or something else. They seemed to thrive in a certain way that I didn't see myself thriving. So I felt inadequate to myself for, you know, not, doing what I thought that I should do. I saw myself as stuck because I thought, well, if I had only moved to Lima, Ohio, I could be a news correspondent in DC right now. Or if I had moved out earlier, I could be a better manager of my money. And I don't know what that regret or that thought that you have is, but you know, 
my changed thinking allowed me to see the beauty in my life and the experience that I have, regardless of the circumstances or the circumstances that I thought were hurtful or that I regretted in my past. And they brought me to where I am today. While I could imagine what life had been like if I had done some other things, the fact is, is I didn't do those other things. So what is life like for me now? You know, to get over that regret and forgive yourself, you have to go to God. And you can ask God to soften your heart about how you see yourself in relation to whatever misstep or mistake that you made. Ask him to show you who you really are in your life today, what your strengths are and what some areas that you need to work on and ask for the lesson that you were to learn from your past. If you're finding these insights helpful, make sure to like this video and drop a comment and subscribe for more life-changing content. Your engagement helps me bring more value to you. Now, let's set new intentions, okay? Once we've identified those things in the past and how we really feel about the circumstances and how it's hindering our happiness, let's set some new intentions. How would a different life choice have really changed your life? I mean, think about it and then let's move on. What you want to focus on more importantly is how to make better life choices moving forward, how to set clear positive intentions that will direct your energy towards what truly matters to you. Remember, happiness is not a destination. It's a journey. There are going to be moments of happiness, but there are going to be moments of other emotions as well. So every step counts. Your future happiness is determined by how you handle your emotions. As an emotional planner, you intentionally seek peace and positive progression in your life. You live intentionally. What do you want your future to look like? Not just emotionally. What type of people do you want to engage with? Or where do you want to live? Or how do you want to live? You have the opportunity today to design the future with intention. Make a plan to guard your emotions, but also make a plan to have more of the emotions that you desire. Happiness is fleeting. <laughs> I keep saying that. You must Plan for a future of happiness instead of just letting life happen. Finally, you should embrace growth. You are a different person from the one who made those choices of the past. How do you think your life would be better if you had made different choices or made different decisions? Growth means learning from your past and using those decisions to shape a better future. I always say, Sophisticated empowerment is about using wisdom to live a life free of drama, a life free of angst, and a life free of dissatisfaction. Personal growth is not a group effort. The areas of growth for your future depends on what we just talked about. What do you want your future to look like? And you start that by changing your mindset. Get out of the thinking that change or growth, it takes too long or it's too hard or you need somebody else to do it with you. What I can tell you is that you get out what you put in. I want you to do what works for you. To begin or to increase a growth mindset. You could do that by watching YouTube videos, by reading books or doing a workshop or taking a course. Start working on the areas that you feel inadequate or insecure about and watch your happiness grow. Thank you for watching. If you're ready to take control of your emotions and transform your life, check out my book, Brains and Bobbles Do What Works For You. It is packed with strategies to help you manage your emotions and live your best life. And don't forget to join my Emotional Reset Challenge for a deeper exploration into sophisticated empowerment. Until next time, stay empowered and keep shining.